understanding Saturn in Sagittarius begins by understanding Saturn and Sagittarius. So let's start off with Sagittarius. Essentially, Sagittarius signifies lofty ambition. Ambition, not in the sense of conventional basic ambitions, but high ambitions, big ambitions, far off ambitions. This is why it's symbolized by a bow and arrow, something that aims high and far away. So let's enumerate two facets of the lofty ambition of Sagittarius. First of all, it loves to learn, and second of all, it loves to teach. This is the sense of the ambition. It's information-oriented ambition, knowledge and experience-oriented ambition. So it likes to take in new information, learning, and it likes to put out information about what it's explored. On the topic of learning, Sagittarius is an extremely curious zodiac sign. Um, it has an open mind because it's very receptive. It, it wants new things. It likes new information. It likes new ideas, different approaches, different ideas. It's therefore broad or accepting are able to be interested in several points of view at once and therefore want to hear several different opinions at once. It likes to listen and bring in new information. And so you could characterize Sagittarius as having hunger or lust or passion. Now on the other facet, the sense of Sagittarius being interested in teaching, this is why Sagittarius is very good for people who speak. It's very good for people who teach, speak, provide information, provide guidance to others. And hence, it's a sign which is very favorable to leadership or leading. Especially in the sense of intellectual guidance or moral guidance, leading on in that sense. So it has a lot to do with this, not really establishing laws, but updating the laws keeping the laws broad and applicable. So in other words, Sagittarius is a leadership-oriented sign, but it leads mostly by providing information. So what this all boils down to is Sagittarius very famous as a philosophical zodiac sign. It's very concerned with philosophy, the ideas of things, the laws behind things, the ethics behind things, etc. Now that we have a good sketch of understanding of Sagittarius, let's figure out Saturn. And then once we have Saturn figured out, we can talk pretty easily and clearly about Saturn in Sagittarius. So Saturn's basic symbolism is negativity. And negativity means subtraction, the minus sign. That means reduction of things, and that implies not gaining, so failing. This is why Saturn has to do with scarcity or having less so it has to do with poverty as well and needing things. Decrease is affected by destruction or removal or prevention of growth of things. That's why Saturn has to do with destruction and restriction. This has two ramifications. Destruction means that Saturn has to do with death and restriction means that Saturn has to do with subordination or curbing of things, the limitation of things. And so since Saturn has to do with death, it also has to do with age, decay, and illness, but it, that also means that it has to do with the lifespan or the longevity, how much time there is until death, and therefore is also connected with having lifespan, having endurance, having long-termness, having tenacity. And because it's all about curbing and subordination and holding things down, it has to do with those people who get subordinated, who get curbed, who get limited. So it has to do with the subordinate people, the masses, the employees, the regular exploited people. Finally, one other aspect of negativity is pessimism. Pessimism actually is the attitude where you're looking for the thing that you have to subtract the thing that should be destroyed, the thing that should be removed, the thing that isn't good. 
that's what Saturn is like. It looks for the stuff that should be destroyed. It looks for the stuff that should be removed. So it's pessimistic, skeptical that anything would be without such a flaw, and distrusting of any presentation of something as being good and flawless. This, in turn, is why Saturn is very smart, actually. Saturn is very smart in a critical or analytical way. It's very logical and critical and scientific. And hence, it is not emotional or biased in its thinking or its observing. It's very objective. It's a detached planet. It can be described as quite cold. It's not warm and mushy, realistic and practical about things. So now we know what we basically need to know about Saturn, and we know what we basically need to know about Sagittarius. We're ready to jump in the pool of Saturn being in Sagittarius. So what we want to do when we interpret any planet and any sign is find the areas where the planet and the sign are talking about or dealing with the same thing. Those things will resonate with each other and sound out, sound up, in terms of what you have to focus your interpretation on. So, for example, Saturn is a planet of science, and Sagittarius is all about philosophy. So what's the interpretation? The interpretation is Saturn and Sagittarius signifies intelligence, and a particular type of intelligence. First of all, understand that it's pragmatic intelligence because Saturn is the one who's activating Sagittarius. It's practical intelligence, pragmatic intelligence, realistic intelligence. And put that realism and logic and science into the big topic nature of Sagittarius, the lofty nature of Sagittarius. So the intelligence of Saturn and Sagittarius is pragmatism and practicality directed at very big ethical, moral, philosophical, religious issues. Another thing about Saturn and Sagittarius is that Saturn has to do with longevity and Sagittarius has to do with goals. So what it, both, what it boils down to is they both have to do with the end of things. So the interpretation here is that Saturn and Sagittarius is good at getting to the end. So expect these people to be able to finish their projects and furthermore expect them to have longevity in their popularity their longevity in their appeal longevity in their passion so they're going to preserve well into old age their careers and etc their intellect their skills will preserve well into old age and even in terms of age of the earth like historical impact saturn and sagittarius helps indicate a person who can actually have a historical impact or lasting impact on the world or at least some section of it finally saturn has to do with mass appeal and Sagittarius has to do with leadership. So that sounds out together very well, and this is why we interpret Saturn and Sagittarius as indicating an influential person, a person who has mass appeal and leadership capacity. So they're influential, they probably have political power or some kind of power in their social unit especially they like they get they have this power, they utilize this power by teaching or through ideology or prov providing information and often particularly through their speeches or writings now we've seen what saturn and sagittarius looks like we've explored the three main nuances of it in theory let's talk about it in practice now and collect a few names of people who actually have Saturn and Sagittarius and are well known and take a look at how real people express this theory of Saturn and Sagittarius. The first big thing was Saturn is planet of science and Sagittarius is the sign for philosophy so these people should be intelligent in that certain way that I expressed. Look at the people who, who have Saturn and Sagittarius. Charles Darwin, Sadhguru, Pope Benedict XVI, Rasputin, Hemingway, Hitchcock, and Poe. So look, Darwin, 
very intelligent, pragmatic, scientific, logical, critical, skeptical approach to big questions like the origin of life, creation, etc. Sadhguru, very logical, very practical, down-to-earth discussion and discourse on very big mystical topics. Another thing about Saturn and Sagittarius was the, the leadership. So, obviously, the people that we already discussed they have a lot of influence. They have a lot of power and political power. Like, actually, it's quite interesting. Rasputin. Pope Benedict, to become a pope, is basically like becoming a president or a king. Sadhguru, the leader of a huge organization. Darwin, a lot of influence on the course of history. And then also this teaching, informing, oration, or writing skill in the last three names, Hemingway, Hitchcock, Poe. But besides those, look at a, a bunch of other names of people with Saturn and Sagittarius. Martin Luther King, Abraham Lincoln, Che Guevara, Osama bin Laden, Lenin, Goebbels, and Al Capone. So these are people who are basically politicians or have huge political power or influence. And look at them all. They have these big ideas and they're very good at orating, giving information. Like Goebbels, the minister of information of the Nazis. Martin Luther King, amazing oration. So these are very interesting people putting a face on this. And the third thing that we talked about with Saturn and Sagittarius was the longevity of Saturn going well with the goal-y nature, the goal-oriented nature of Sagittarius. So again, th this is just highlighted by all the people that we've talked about so far. They have a lot of historical impact. You know, these aren't just some scientists or some politician. These are major historical impact people that undertook big projects. But I think it's also interesting to look at this principle in an area which is commonly short-term. So like artists and musicians. So look at these names of artists and musicians with Saturn and Sagittarius. Chopin, Bocelli's classical, Michael Jackson, Prince, Madonna, and Lady Gaga. Look at these people in terms of how they preserve into old age. Michael Jackson, Prince, Madonna, very, very retaining their popularity in a very short-term field have very long-term impact. Now, what I would like to do is not just talk about the Saturn and Sagittarius, because that's only just one ingredient in the recipe of a chart, but talk about a whole chart. And I'd like to compare at least two of the people on our list. There was a few people that I thought, oh, I would like to compare so-and-so with so-and-so, but many of the people I couldn't find confirmed birth times for. So I don't like to use charts without confirmed birth times, if at all possible. But I did find a very interesting comparison and illustration that we could do today. We can do Joseph Goebbels versus Sadhguru. First, let's just talk about the two people themselves, how they are similar and how they're different. They're both very similar in having huge influence and power. They're also both very similar by exerting their influence through media. They're both also very similar in terms of being excellent speakers. And they're both also very similar in having a very pragmatic, practical, or gritty feel dealing with big, big topics like ethics, morality, etc., spirituality, etc. Joseph Goebbels, by the way, you may only know him as the Nazi propaganda minister. But prior to that, he almost was a Christian priest. So, and then he's prior to meeting the Nazi party, he was obsessed with spirituality. So that is an interesting thing. Make sure you know that about Goebbels. The difference, of, of course, and obviously between the two, is that Goebbels is basically the guy in the black hat, and Sadhguru is basically the guy in the white hat. Basically, we think of Sadhguru as a good guy. He's trying to help people. And basically, we think of Goebbels as a bad guy. He's trying to kill people. So let's see how these similarities and these differences might be visible in their actual charts. 
The similarities between these charts is actually astounding. Both of them, of course, have Saturn and Sagittarius. Both of them also have Jupiter in Libra with Venus, which is significant because if Saturn is in Sagittarius, then Jupiter is the lord of Saturn. So it's going to have a big impact on how Saturn actually plays out when it's in Sagittarius. So both of them have this very deep similarity, Saturn in Sagittarius with Jupiter in Libra with Venus in Libra also. Furthermore, both of them also have the moon in Capricorn. How odd is that? These guys were not born on the same day. They were born like 50 years apart. And further, furthermore, both of them have this triad of the Sun, Mars, and Mercury together in one sign. So there are an incredible number of similarities. How do you get these people to be one guy is a black hat guy and one guy is a white hat guy? One guy's a good guy and one guy's a bad guy. And as we already said, well, these people do have a lot of similarities to them. But what is it that makes them really different? Well, the significant difference is really what is dominating the chart. The thing that you do not find in Sadhguru's chart is that K2 is not dominating it. Rahu and K2 are out of the way in a place more or less where they should be in the 12th and the 6th house. Whereas in Goebel's case, K2 is the master of this chart. K2 and Rahu, all the planets are in between them. K2 is almost exactly on the ascendant. It is just absolutely dominating the chart. And that is something which is very, very absent from Sadhguru's chart. He does not have Rahu and K2 prominent at all. He has the Sun, Jupiter, and the Saturn and Sagittarius being dominant. So this alone really tells you the different flavor of how one person is much less stable than the other and much more likely to be strange than the other. And that's Goebbels because of the influence of K2. Not just influence, but absolute dominance. As you've seen, if you've been watching all the other videos that I do, you see that this is very often the case with people who do very bad things is they have some intense conjunction to K2 and Rahu. Often it's the moon. Now here you can see Goebbels, it's the ascendant. A couple of other things that are also somewhat significant. Goebbels' chart has a lot of sun D planets, whereas Sadhguru's chart just has one. So it's also interesting, both of them have Gandanta Sandhi on their ascendant. But that's all that Sadhguru has in terms of Sandhi. Sandhi means crossing borders, being too close to the border, being within a few degrees of the border. Goebbels has it all over the place. I mean, even his Saturn in Sagittarius, which is making him a part of this conversation, is at this first degree. It's within the zero degree border of Sagittarius. Same with his Jupiter and Libra. They've just barely entered these signs. Moon also is too close to the border to really be prosperous. And one other difference between the two charts is for Goebbels, everything not only is between K2 and Rahu, but everything is also under the ground. A dark head person. Not, it's not necessary that if you have a chart with everything underground that you're a bad guy. What having planets underground means is non-disclosure, non-visibility. They won't disclose themselves. So, in other words, of being mysterious. When that mixes with everything else in Goebbels' chart, it makes him. But what I'm saying is, look at Sadhguru's, it's quite different. Almost everything is above the ground compared to Goebbels, where almost everything is below the ground. The major difference, however, between the two is the dominance of K2 in Goebbels' chart, which is not there in Sadhguru's chart. So, Hopefully you now understand Saturn and Sagittarius well enough that you can start to make interpretations of it in actual charts. If you want to know my take on all of your planets in your signs and houses, etc., 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 you can get my um, complete guide to your birth chart or the birth chart overview, which you can get at my website, victicara.com. So please go and at least check out that page and subscribe for more videos and like the video and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.